We all know these are trying times in real estate. Nobody knows where anything is going. If you're a seller, you're confused. Is it now time to list your house? Are you at the top of the market? If you're a buyer, are you going, well, let's hold off a little bit. Well, stick around and I'm gonna go through everything that you need to know with this month's market report. If you haven't met me, my name is Eric Hudson. I'm a real estate agent here in the Las Vegas area. And every single week, people reach out looking for real estate advice, whether buying a home, selling a home, or investing in real estate. And we are always glad to help anyone who needs it. And there's no cost just to talk to us. So if you want to talk, just call, email, or send a text, and we'll get back to you and answer any of your questions. And by the end of this video, if you felt I gave you a little bit of value, go ahead and consider subscribing and clicking that like button. It'll really do me a favor there. Okay, like I said, these are trying times. A lot of people don't know where the market is going and the market has gone through a really quick shift. So every month the board puts out their statistics and I like to go over them so you can see where we stand right now, where we came from and offer some predictions about where we're going. Okay, let's go ahead and get it started see what's going on in the market here in Las Vegas, North Las Vegas and Henderson. So let's start off. Well, when we look at a market update, so we're doing a market update for July, which means we're looking at numbers that came from June and those numbers just came out this morning. So you're about to get the fresh look at them. And first thing we have to look at how many units sold what we want to look at is what's sold for every type of housing unit out there. So we have single family housing, uh, condos, townhomes, um, manufactured homes. I, I don't really cover manufactured homes because uh, there are so few of them and there's a specific market for those. And a lot of those are actually sold in cash. So let's go ahead and get to the statistics for this month. So let's go ahead and look how many units sold back in June. So. June, which is what we call the July uh, statistics, 2,668 single family homes sold. So if you look, 4,674 new homes came on the market in the month of June. And I'm sure you can see there are a little over 2,000 more units that came on the market than sold. We've had a reversal and there are more units coming on the market right now, which is driving up inventory, of course. And believe it or not, fewer people are actually out there purchasing homes, and we'll go over that a little bit later. For single family homes, the median price was $480,000, and the average was $592,297. Now, the average is usually higher than the median because the median represents uh, the middle, where most people are actually buying houses, and the average can be driven up by things. Like last month, there was a sale for $32 million, which actually pulls the market, as known as statistics, skewing it to the right. As far as inventory goes, uh, we now have 2.2 months of inventory, which is one of the highest I've seen in a few years. So it is actually creeping up. There is no lie about that. Now, let's look at the condo and townhome market. Well, last month, 736 units sold. Uh, 1,202 units came on the market. So that is a big reversal. Now, when you look at the pricing, the median price was $280,000 compared against the average price of $328,915. According to the board, the availability of townhomes and condos was about 1.8 months. Now that we've gone over that, let's go ahead and compare this against what happened the month prior, where we started at the beginning of the year, and let's look at where we were this time last year. So going back just last month, last month, 2,907 units sold, uh, 4,033 new units came on the market. The median price was $482,000. The average was $575,647 with 1.2 months of availability for single family. Now, when we go into condos and townhomes, we're looking at 851 units sold with 1,110 units coming on the market. 
Median price of 285, average of 307, 514 with 0.9 months of inventory. So inventory has actually doubled over a month's period. Now let's go all the way back to the beginning of the year. So we look at the beginning of the year, single family homes, they sold 2,561. Now remember, we're coming off the holidays. So these are December numbers. So we had Christmas in there. So fewer people are looking. So we're gonna see a little bit of a difference. New listings, 2,900. Median price, $435,000. Keep that in mind. Average price, 527,618 with 0.7 months of inventory. That's at the beginning of the year. For condos and townhomes, 711 sold that month with 727 new units coming on the market. The median price was $243,000, while the average was $257,520, half a month of inventory, half a month. Now, if we go back a year ago and we look at the same numbers, this is what we saw. Single family, 3,542 units sold. Remember, if you've been watching now the market, uh, things have been hot. And last year, people were offering like 30, 40, 50,000 over. So new listings came on the market, 3,860. The median price back then was $395,000 with an average price of $495 thousand dollars point seven months of inventory condos and townhomes uh units sold was 943 new listings taken 962 with a median price of two hundred sixteen thousand dollars and with an average of two hundred thirty seven thousand nine hundred eighty nine dollars point six months of inventory so just a little bit over half a month of inventory now, let's break these numbers down in another way. So what we're going to be doing is looking at the median, since that's the most representative of the market. And from last month, the price has actually gone down $2,000. From the beginning of the year, it's gone up $50,000. And from one year ago, it's gone up $85,000. So anyone who purchased a house a year ago at the median price has $85,000 in equity now. Now, when you go to condos and townhomes, uh, it, it's in, in a way even better, but worse. The amount that it went down from last month was $5,000 for the median. From the beginning of the year, you're up 37,000. And from last year, you're up 64,000. Now you may go like, how's it worse and better? Now you can see the 5,000, how that's worse, but 64,000, Believe it or not, is more than eighty-five thousand because of the price differential. So, if you owned a condo or townhome, you are actually better off financially as far as the amount of money that you made. Now, let's see where the market's kind of going. So, we see where it's at. We see where it's been. Now, let's try to get some indicators of where it's going. So, when you look at days on market, last month, June, which are the numbers we use for this month. The average of all housing was on the market for 17 days. The median time was eight days for single family homes. Average 17, median eight. Kind of tracks with the overall data. It's the majority of the housing units. For condos, average 16 days, median eight. For townhomes, average 16, median nine. Now let's keep going back. If you go uh, just one month prior, average time on market overall was 12 days, with the median being six. Uh, for single family, average was 15, with the median being seven. Condos, average 12, median being seven. And for townhomes, average of 12, with the median being six. Now, what about the beginning of the year? Let's, we're using this to try to track what's going on. So the beginning of the year, overall market, average time on market, 24 days of sold units. Median, 11 days. For single family homes, it was an 
average of 24 days, a median of 11, again, tracking. Condos, average 27 days, median nine. Townhomes, 22 days, median nine. Now let's go back one year ago to see where we stood. So one year ago, we were at overall, <clears throat> one year ago, the overall market average time was 18 days, median seven for single family homes, uh, average 16, median seven for condos, average 27, median eight. For townhomes, average 15, median seven. Well, what does that mean? Well, let me, let me look here. So I, I'm looking from one year ago, the average time and median have actually gone down. Now, for the past six weeks, everyone's saying the market's crashing. Does that look like a crash to you? Now, some things, uh, when we start looking at the future, eh, it's not as good. So let's look at something else. What are the average times of the homes that are sitting on the market right now, not the ones that have sold? So right now, the entire market, the average time is 46 days, a median of 26 days of inventory. Single family, 43 days, 22 days. Again, tracking. Condos, average time on market so far, just sitting out there, is 51 days, with a median time of 23. Townhomes, 48 days, with a median of 23. So, I'm going to be honest, a lot of these houses aren't going to sell. You'll find a lot of the ones that are driving this average so high are the ones that have been on the market for hundreds of days. If you go to the market, there are houses that have been on there for three years. And a lot of times that has something to do with some other factors. Uh, there are renters in there and the seller has listed the house simultaneously. Like if someone just comes along and gives them money, you know, like uh, on Zillow, make me move. There's all kinds of factors. And then some people are going to just plain drop out of the market. And you have these people who are going like, I need this for my house. Well, market doesn't work that way. So let's look how you're going to take advantage of this as a buyer and a seller. So let's start with the buyers first. Well, right now you're in kind of a cat's bird seat because no one has realized that uh, the sky is not falling. So people are running around, sky is falling. So sellers are listing their homes quick as possible because they see this. Now, probably by the time this uh, video comes out, the newspaper would have come out with the message that goes, housing in Las Vegas has declined because news loves negative stuff. We all love negative stuff. That's what makes you click on stuff. Housing about to crash. The bubble is popping. You know, all that stuff. Well, yeah, it went down. Probably deserved to go down. And here's some of the reasons it went down. Interest rates. Interest rates. You have to pay $500 more per month for a medium-priced home just because of interest rates. And that affects buying power. Now, some of the things that you couldn't get in the past, over the last month, you can get as a buyer, which means things like closing costs. About half the contracts now have closing costs in them. Take advantage of that. Best way to get it is take advantage of the seller who said, I need this for my house. They overpriced it. Well, you know, about one third of all the houses on the market, houses, condos, townhomes, had a price reduction in the last week. Last week. That's because everyone was overpriced in their homes. Look for the one that's the most overpriced uh, within reason where they haven't lowered the price and go in there and offer the proper price. Now is your chance to get a house without paying over and trying to come out of money and all of this stuff. You, you, you got something. For the sellers, here's where you need to be. You need to price your home properly. No one's going to give you all that money that you want for the home or you think you deserve for the home. This is just being dead honest. It's not going to happen. 
you need to price ahead of the market right now because as each seller panics, puts their house on the market, and then decreases the price, more panic will ensue. What you need to do is price ahead of the market by first looking at your sold comps in your neighborhood. And I mean your real sold comps. I have had this multiple times where someone says, well, I was told the house around the corner sold for 620,000. When I go in, the house didn't sell for six. There was no house sold for 620. High sales, 575. I go further. I don't just look at the MLS. I then go into the tax records because not every sale goes to the MLS. When I go, guess what? That's what it was. Occasionally, you'll find one that's a little bit higher, but in general, tax sale uh, records that are not related to the MLS are going to be the same or less in general. So make sure you do that careful analysis because you're looking at the numbers and how they're creeping up. You do not want to be a statistic. You do not want to have a buyer who's savvy go in there and take advantage of the fact that you got a little greedy to begin with. Go ahead, price your home properly. So for the buyers and sellers, this is the advice that I give. And some other advice that I give is if you are looking to uh, make some kind of real estate transaction and you're looking, or you just have some questions, all the contact information is below. Call, text, email, and we'll get back to you with whatever information that you are requesting. And again, I ask, if you have not hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do it. It'll make a puppy happy. And most importantly, I got some more videos for you to watch because YouTube likes that for some reason.